The educator Dr. Maria Montessori once said, The child developing harmoniously and the adult improving himself at his side make a very exciting and attractive picture. Welcome to Montessori Education with me, Jesse McCarthy, where we talk raising children and educating students while bettering ourselves right alongside them. Have you heard any of these three supposed truths or beliefs about Montessori school? In Montessori, children are allowed to play all day. Montessori children are free to do whatever they want. There are no teachers in Montessori. The children teach themselves. Now, there is definitely some truth to each of these statements, but ultimately they are very misleading. And today I'm going to talk about why. The first thing I want to mention related to this, which can surprise people new to Montessori school, is that the name Montessori was never trademarked. Maria Montessori never copyrighted or patented any of her methods or schools. Practically, this means anybody can really build a school. Put a sign up that says Montessori, and there you go. You got a Montessori school. But is it really Montessori? Maybe not. So an underlying fact every parent and teacher will want to be aware of is all Montessori schools were not created equal. They are not the same. So the, the best analogy I can give is to religion. Take, for instance, Christianity and Islam. In the beginning, there was one Christianity and one Islam, founded by Jesus and Muhammad, respectively. Today, not so much. Like There are literally thousands and thousands of different churches and mosques all over the world, and each run by people who believe that they are following in the footsteps of the religion's founder. Now, there will be similarities between these, of course, but one has to judge each church or mosque on its own merits. And the same is ultimately true with Montessori schools. Of course, one is, is a scientific approach and the other one is religious, but you know this is an analogy. So Now, I, I do think there are great people doing great work to make some standards across Montessori for parents and teachers you know, to seek when they're looking for schools. But the fact still remains that anyone can call themselves Montessori. Okay, I wanted to get that, that kind of biggie out of the way up front. And another overall point is that this episode is going to be you know, relatively short compared to others, and it won't cover everything you want to find when searching for a real Montessori school, you know, whether you're a parent or teacher. Instead, I hope it will help some to be aware of a few definite beliefs about Montessori to avoid. Again, last note. Much of what I'll say is from an article I wrote called, Is It Really Montessori? But I'll try to add some unique drama here for you listeners as we go along. So with all this in mind, I'll start in a second with Dr. Maria Montessori herself, who would be the first to set straight anyone who presented as true some of the claims I mentioned at the opening. You know, like the first one. In Montessori, children are allowed to play all day. Here is Dr. Montessori's biographer and friend, E.M. Standing, on this point. Quote, An environment in which children are simply physically free to run about and play is not enough. That, says Montessori, is the kind of freedom we give to cats and lizards. End of quote. So clearly, Dr. Montessori was pretty explicit about not having children play all day. Now, of course, this doesn't mean play is then tossed aside in Montessori school. For in, in great programs, it is a meaningful part of a child's day. But just like in our own lives as adults, play, you're thinking like sports, hobbies, relaxing with friends, it's a type of fun we have in addition to work. In real Montessori schools, as in any productive individual's life, work comes first. And surprising as it can be, in effective Montessori classrooms, children love to work. So much that it's possible the idea of, you know, playing all day actually originated from some children really feeling like they were doing just that in class. Playing all day. For instance, here's Nobel Prize winner and former Montessori child, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, reminiscing on his time in Montessori. Quote, It was wonderful to be alive then. Studying was like playing, end of quote. 
Or take how the inventor Thomas Edison describes Montessori. Now, he wasn't a Montessori child, but he was a huge admirer of, of Montessori and Montessori schools. Quote, it makes learning a pleasure, end of quote. Or even Jeff Bezos, Amazon's founder and a former Montessori child himself, who in an interview last September talked about how he loved his work so much that his Montessori teacher felt the need to stop him from using certain materials at times. Quote, she couldn't get me to switch tasks so she would have to pick up my chair and move me. End of quote. But Montessori children's work being a pleasure, you know, as Edison puts it, or it's feeling like play to them, as Marquez says, or it's just being like really engrossing, as Bezos talks about, is not an end-all goal of Montessori school. There are many, many other benefits, and one of which is when the children do get outside each day to truly play, I mean, they let loose like only contented children really can. The fact is, great Montessori schools value both the mind and the body. And so they fulfill children's need for a purposeful balance of real work and, you know, real play. So overall, if I haven't made it clear yet, in great Montessori schools, children do not play all day. At least not in the traditional sense of what play is. Okay, on to claim number two. Montessori children are free to do whatever they want. So let me just say flat out. If you hear this from a, you know, quote, Montessori teacher or principal, run, for something is very wrong. Actual Montessori schools are not free-for-alls where children just, you know, finger paint and roam acres of rural forests or something like that. Rather, they're organized communities that offer a great deal of structure and order for a child, within which he or she can experience true freedom. Speaking over a century ago in California, Dr. Montessori commented on this, quote, The work of the school is to organize the work of the child. It is the organization of the work which gives direct influence on the establishment of mental order. End of quote. I mean, we all know this kind of like just basically in our own homes. Like when things are a mess, you, can, you tend to feel kind of a mess in your own mind. When things are really organized and clear, you you feel kind of clear yourself. You know, not always the case, but definitely something similar. So Dr. Montessori taught that structure and order in the classroom are essential to a child's healthy development. But she was also quick to add, quote, beyond the teacher knowing the organization of the work, above all, the teacher must respect the liberty of the child, end of quote. So organization plays a foundational role in Montessori but only alongside genuine respect for a child's developing autonomy. And this respect can be found throughout the work of Dr. Montessori, such as in the classic children's line in which she loved to share, quote, help me to do it by myself, end of quote. Now, given how much emphasis is placed on independence in Montessori, so on offering children a choice and a voice in matters that affect them, It's understandable that some parents think Montessori children are just, quote, free to roam about with no direction. In reality, though, Montessori schooling provides a unique integration of freedom and limits that looks very different than the chaos of little boys and girls doing whatever they want. So in great Montessori schools, you should see a relatively calm classroom environment where children are free to choose the work they'd like, but within very clear limits. For instance, if a child takes something out to work with, after she's done, it must be put back on the shelf right where she got it. So in other words, classrooms should not really look messy or generally untidy. I should say at least not preschool classrooms. Elementary can get a little different, which I'm not going to get into here, but it's, it can get different. And incidentally, on the podcast page for this episode, I'll link to a few examples of calm, beautiful Montessori preschool classrooms around the world. All right, so last claim number three. There are no teachers in Montessori. The children teach themselves. Again, there is a grain of truth here. So in real Montessori schools, children are often teaching themselves, with the adult in the classroom serving as a kind of guide on the side. 
This is because instead of receiving dry, traditional lectures on academic content that is really destined for bubble tests and trash bins, Montessori children are offered engaging individual and small group lessons on work that they can grasp and perfect independently. This is actually the secret to why, say for example, so many children are doing multiplication and division by age five, which is just insane as compared to what are the state standards usually are. And it's also because classrooms are made deliberately with mixed ages. Ideally, this is three to six years old in primary and six to nine or six to 12 in elementary so that children can actually teach one another as well. But the idea that children are able to teach each other and do serious work on their own with no adult guidance, so you know, to learn math, language, geography, science, and more without actual teacher direction, that is a myth. And sadly, one that is pretty popular today. But it's actually nothing new. In her own day, Dr. Montessori was often confronted with the idea that her schools didn't have or even need teachers such as this, this great time when she visited a classroom in France that was supposedly carrying out her principles. I'm kind of chuckling because you'll, you'll wait, you'll hear what she has to say, but here's, here's the story she shared. Quote, We came to one room. It was the science room. Not a soul was there except the master, nor, for that matter, had been for several days. When I inquired into his method of teaching, the master airily replied that he did not teach. The children discovered it appears he had placed a mysterious white mixture on the laboratory bench, and the children were supposed to ascertain the various substances it contained by discovery. Considering how few real discoveries are made by trained scientists in a lifetime, it was, to say the least, strange to expect inexperienced children without knowledge, without method, without stimulus, and therefore without interest to make perpetual discoveries from day to day. No wonder the room was empty, end of quote. So I sometimes love Montessori's humor, but man, she could be biting, right? Like it's, it's pretty tough. Anyhow, in short, for children to successfully learn, they do need guidance. And this is why in every real Montessori classroom, you will find a knowledgeable and loving teacher. In the end, all of the three claims I've mentioned are not true of authentic Montessori programs. So in Montessori, children are not allowed to play all day, nor are they free to do whatever they want all day. And lastly, despite the fact that Montessori children are often quite literally teaching themselves, there are actual adults in Montessori classrooms teaching the kids. All right, that is what I have for you today. I hope this has been helpful for some of you out there and maybe will aid in your search for a great Montessori school for your child or for yourself if you're a teacher, or maybe to stay away from some not so great, quote, Montessori schools out there. Uh, incidentally, in the Montessori community, we call these schools that are kind of phony Montessori schools, we call them Montessortive schools. All right, uh, let me know your thoughts on this episode or others by writing in, or you can comment on a social media platform or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. I, I've been loving to read those. There have been a few recently that I'm just like, just really, really proud. It made me proud. So thank you to those who, who put something up there. Um, you can write anywhere else as well. You know, it's kind of up to you. If you have constructive criticism, write me personally. So I'm always trying to improve. Uh, if, you, if you're out there and you've got something true to say that I'm getting wrong, yeah, send it in, please. All right, it is time for me to get out of here. All my best to everyone out there and adios for now. <laughs>